Hey everyone, we're continuing our Revelations full set review here, and we've moved on to multiple faction cards, and uh, we're grading them in terms of how spicy I think they are, how excited I am to put them in a deck, try them in a deck, unrelated to how powerful they are, and totally subjective, so I want to hear other people's opinions on these cards. And before we start, I wanted to say that there are a lot of... Uh, hybrid or multi-faction cards here so this is going to get broken up into more than one video and i'm trying to put the cards i don't have like a particular order here but they're grouped by the faction that they're associated with and uh we're starting with basically everything that touches warpath so we're going to start with a pristine world and uh, this, this card is a uh, one spice for me. Not because I think that the card doesn't have purpose, but because this card, it, ho it hoses a deck that I don't really feel like I need to hose. That uh, this card absolutely brutally demolishes Omnitron. But I'm not... I don't like hate Omnitron players, so um, I'm not in any rush to use this card, and I don't I don't really expect to use this card. So uh, if you hate Omnitron players, then maybe this card excites you. But for me, uh, I think there's already a good number of ways to deal with artifacts and locations that don't involve. Uh, being as targeted towards one specific deck that I think against most decks, you don't need something of this magnitude to deal with their artifacts or locations. Uh, and yeah, so it's just not, it's just not my favorite. Okay. Next angel of the garden. This card is a three spice for me. We've already talked about it. Uh, I think it's got a lot of things going on for it with the flying, the lifelink, but most importantly, the ability to activate at preemptive speed and counter an ability card. That That is a really unique effect that we haven't seen before. We haven't seen um, activated abilities at preemptive speed, to the best of my knowledge, and the ability to have this as a counter spell in the command zone is a pretty interesting Thing that it has going for it so pretty cool card don't think i have like a super interesting deck in mind for it but the card itself is pretty cool okay next grimmelkin of rot and i think that this is also going to be a three spice card for me it's an undead beast it's efficiently costed so it can fit in a, maybe a few different types of decks it's Sleeper's Warpath, which is a really interesting combination. And it lets you choose a character in your deck. And when Grimmelkin of Rot dies, the chosen character moves to your graveyard. So it, it, it enables some very interesting strategies. Uh, I don't have a specific plan in mind for it. But I do want to mention here that one thing that got brought up during the reveal of this card was that the card has an awkward situation where uh, if you draw the character that you've chosen, not only will Grimmelkin of Rot not put the chosen character into the graveyard when it dies, but you also don't necessarily know if the character you drew is the version of the character that you chose. That if you have like three copies of let's say cyber infested dragon in your deck and you pick that card and you draw one um there's a one in three chance that it's the one that you picked in which case grimmelkin of rot's effect has been turned off so although this is supposed to be video talking about how excited i am about the cards i do want to say that i have a suggestion for this one that i think most people may agree on and uh of course, the devs, it's up to them in terms of like if this actually works on the the programming side because I don't know how the game works in that regard. Uh, but I think that when you choose the card, it should remove the card from the game entirely. So it's no longer in your deck and it's not in your graveyard either. 
And then when Grimmel Can of Rot dies, it takes the card from outside the game and puts it in the graveyard. That way you can't accidentally draw the card. I think that's a pretty easy solution that doesn't really change the overall effect of Grimmel Can of Rot and overall will feel better for everybody. So that's my two cents there. Moving on to the next card, we have Compiled Corpses, and this is an ability card that creates an XX Zombie Beast. And I think Zombie probably should be undead there, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, with Unstoppable, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. So all cards, it doesn't matter whether they're characters or abilities or anything else. And it's got Recall for six, so you can play this twice. So I think this card's a four spice for me. I think this card's really cool. I think that it is the reason to play Warpath and Sleepers together right now, that if I'm going to build a Warpath plus Sleepers deck, this is the card that excites me the most by combining those two factions. And uh, the fact that you can play it twice allows you to really, really lean into this card specifically as your core game plan. Uh, and you just focus on just dumping everything in your graveyard. And if you accidentally dump Compiled Corpse in, in your graveyard, that's fine because uh, you could still play it from your graveyard. Cool card. Big fan. Like that one a lot. Next, we've moved on to Warpath plus Descendants of the Dragon. And uh, this is Cultural Exchange. I believe we talked about this one before. This is a five spice card for me. I still don't know which two locations I want to put together but the fact that you can do that now is just so wild and new that I'm really, really excited to experiment with all the different locations that you can put together, as well as see what other people do with the card. So big fan, just because I think this encourages players to try something that hasn't been possible before, and I have no idea what that is going to look like. Very excited for that. And we have also Warpath Descendants of the Dragon. Zoe Life Singer. And uh, Zoe is untouchable, is a 2 2, and gets plus 2 plus 2 for each other character you control. And that plus 2 plus 2 for each other character you control is kind of an effect I've been waiting to have in the game for a while. I think I'm going to give this 4 spice because I could imagine putting it in the command zone and really building a deck around that effect specifically. Could be fun. And the fact that she has untouchable makes it a little easier to build around her because it is less likely that she is going to have her effect turned off or that she is going to get killed. So you can lean into her as the core part of your deck. And uh, the only thing I, I will say about it is I'm really curious to see how it plays because Warpath plus Descendants of the Dragons together wouldn't have been the first combination of factions I would have guessed to see that plus two plus two for each other character you control effect because that that effect is I think an effect that is fairly simple that I was expecting to see in the game at some point but um Descendants of the Dragons plus Warpath was not really the combo that I would have guessed because Warpath does some token things but Descendants of the Dragons doesn't usually so very curious to see what people do with this one. Okay. Moving on, we have Warpath plus Flame Dawn. Prepare for conflict. I've talked about this one before. I think this is a five spice for me, uh, just because I'm really curious to see how good this actually is. That um, my gut reaction is that this could be really great, or maybe it's not so great. But I, I feel like I really want to try it to see how it goes. And I think it's gonna be cool to try to build a deck around this specifically, and that you can get kind of creative with either including really high density of low cost characters, or if you wanna get weird with it, it says the top two characters in your deck. If you only have two characters in your deck, this could be used to target those two characters specifically in a really weird way. So fun card looking forward to giving this one a shot and next we have dragon trainer and this one is uh, a card that has received some negative attention and for that reason i'm actually more excited about it now than i was originally this is a four spice for me 
uh, that originally I was kind of like, you know, whatever, I think this card's going to be fun to play in draft, and maybe it'll be fun for a dragon, kind of like a meme, meme deck. But uh, now I feel because this card has been labeled as uh, less useful, that I want to kind of go on a mission to see how good can we really make this card. And I have a lot of ideas in mind. I, I kind of want to try a triple flamed on list where the command zone is Klor, of course, Dragon Trainer, and Beck. That allows us to be in triple flamed on, access the most aggressive cards in the game, and then we've given up an efficient command zone for the option to, when the game gets to the later half of the game, say, you know what? Screw it. We're going to we're gonna start just making dragons. Could be fun. And it might even be all right. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this one a lot. Okay. Next, we have subject uh, one... M N Y. Uh, I don't know if that's like one money, one one over money, but somebody can explain the joke to me in the comments here. Uh, but uh, I think this is a three spice card for me. It's uh, solid. Seems like you have some cool things you could do with it. Uh, it's draw a character with fifteen more attack, and because of that, you can. Uh, intentionally include only one character with 15 or more attacks so that this finds you that specific character and the flexibility of it being warpath or genesis allows you to potentially go into um either faction independently of the other and have the card serve a very different purpose in two completely different decks i'll also add here that it's artificial and a beast so regardless of what direction you want to take it it supports the tribe that is associated with both of these factions. So overall solid card. I don't know what I want to do with it, but I'm curious to see some other people come up with some cool things to do with the card. Next, Made Mighty by Metal. And we've talked about this one before. Uh, and Made Mighty by Metal. Um, this one's tough. I, th I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's close. I don't think it's five spice for me. I think it's a four spice. It's very close, though. Uh, but the card is crazy. That the card encourages you to build a deck with a high density of 15 or more attack characters. And Made Mighty by Metal is your big payoff. It is an absolutely huge haymaker. And I'm excited to see some Warpath Genesis decks combined with each other. Uh, and I will absolutely be trying the card. But I don't think it's my day one agenda. Okay, and now we have a couple more. Ceaseless Hunger, and this is a Exiles plus Warpath ability, 5 cost. Target character you control on the battlefield and target character an enemy. Target enemy character each deal damage to each other equals to their power. If your character survives, fully heal it and it gains Bloodthirst 4. Um, this, this is going to be a... Uh, to spice for me. And the reason is that fight already exists. Um, and I'm not so sure that this card is interesting enough to me to warrant uh, the significant increase in cost. That uh, I like fight a lot and... I don't think that the the full heal and the bloodthirst four is exciting enough for me to want to build a deck with this card specifically. I think it's a totally fine card. I think it's also got a very significant purpose in draft for when that comes around, but I'm not in any rush to put this into a deck. And our final card, Tormented Eidolon. This is a five spice card for sure. It's a one cost two two, so it's flimsy at first. It's also Warpath Veror, which um we've only really seen on Defiant Hermit, as far as I know. And this doesn't go in the Defiant Hermit deck. So it's interesting to see that that branch uh that we're gonna have a way to play Warpath and Cult of Veror together that is different than how it's been done before. And at the end of the turn if a character you control 
died this turn, Tormented Eilon gets plus two plus two if it's on the battlefield, and you gain one extra resource next turn. I think the card is just really, really quite good. <laughs> and um, it's, it's fun because this is the reason to play Warpath and Cult of Veror together, that I don't like this card just because it's good. I like it because it is encouraging players to put these two factions together and play a deck that hasn't been played before. Because uh, although, like if this card was just Cult of Veror, I would not be excited because it would just get shoved into like every Cult of Veror deck. Whereas this has a significant enough requirement uh, in terms of including both Warpath and Cult of Veror, that we're going to see a new deck built around this card specifically, that this card is the gateway into a uh, new marriage between these two factions. And that wraps up this first part of the multi-faction cards, and we're going to move on to the next part very shortly. <laughs> 